Uh, all right, guys, welcome back. We're about to uh, get into our final game today. Dog versus Kibler. We see the classes. We see Priest from each player. How about that, Chucky? Yeah, I mean, I think regardless of format, people kind of go back to their tendencies. Kibler, mm. I think, even has Golden Priest. I know Dog has been, like, really loving Priest lately. And, yeah, people just kind of tend to go with what they like. Dog didn't even bring Shamans, so... Maybe having different ideas about the format than we did. Obviously, these Priest players have seen something we really didn't. I saw some cards I liked from Priest, but I didn't really think it had all the tools it needed to keep up with the board against these kind of Zooey decks. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem very good when you think about it, but we haven't seen it in practice yet. And I think we've both been pretty surprised by some of the things the players have come up with with this format. So uh, let's, let's just be optimistic. Uh, maybe some cool stuff can happen. And of course the format we're talking about is uh, the special format for this particular tournament. Um, it's uh, themed around uh, our sponsor Geico. Uh, and their slogan is 50 minutes can save you 50% or more on insurance. And uh, the rules for the tournament are rule number one, all cards must contain at least two instances of the factors of 15. Those numbers include exactly 1, 3, 5, and 15. And these numbers can appear in the mana cost, attack, HP, durability in the case of a weapon, or text of a card. So uh, again, I'll use Violet Teacher as an example again. A Violet Teacher has three instances. Its mana cost four does not qualify. Its attack three is a factor of 15. Its toughness five is a factor of 15. That's two instances. And the third, just for bonus points, is the fact that it summons a 1-1 one, one when you cast a spell. So all cards have to have at least two of these instances to be able to be played. If you have cards that don't meet the requirement, as some players have, the first uh, the fir first replacement that is placed into your deck is the Magma Rager, which is why we've seen it in some of the decks up, up to now. And rule number two of the tournament is your deck must also include Nazdormu, because time is ever so precious in everything we do. So uh, that's why uh, these players are playing some interesting decks, some interesting classes, and some interesting combination of cards. And that's why some classes might be a little bit better than others, and uh, we're kind of uh, trashing on Priest a little bit here still. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to see if it was truly a top-tier choice, or if it was more of a rushed, like, okay, let's go to the Priest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 15 minutes was what the players had to build three decks, and we are playing Conquest format, so it is pretty important to distribute your time somewhat evenly across the three decks, and in 15 minutes, that is a really tough task. Um, you know, I did come up with this challenge, but uh, when I tried to, uh, like, think about it and try to do it myself, it seemed really, really, really hard. So, um, it's kind of fair, because, you know, it feels like an impossible task to do in 15 minutes, but it was the same impossible task uh, given to all the players. So. Yep. So we might have a few. You know, we've seen our fair share of Magma Ragers. So kind of imbalanced decks across the board. People just mm -hmm. have not optimal stuff. But nobody does. So mm -hmm. pretty fun. Uh, the main observation that I've seen so far is, again, one that I've, I've said already, is that the, the more aggressive decks um, seem to do a little bit better. Um, that's you know not about the cards that you can play as much as it is about the cards that you can't play, which include removal and board clears. So, yeah. Also, um, you know, as as we keep seeing these tournaments roll out, uh, the taunts just seem so significant. Um, so yeah, I think Sludge Belch is an ex exceptionally good card. I wonder if there's really any others. Like actually, Fen Creeper is legal. Fen Creeper is legal. Uh, yeah, I mean, Defender Vargas, I think, has been the obvious taunter of choice. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Fin Creeper, Sinjin, Sludge Belcher, all legal. So, lots of things you can play. It's mostly about what your mind kind of jumps to first in the 15 minutes you're allowed. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, in some of these games, the taunts haven't been insanely great at, you know, keeping yourself safe, because your opponent then gets the initiative to kill the taunt in whatever the way they want, and kind of just keep pushing through more damage, and you have no way to really clear the board unless you're a shaman. Yeah. It feels like they help a little bit, though. They kind of, like, stall out yeah. the game, but 
usually if you're in that spot, it's hard to come back. I just feel that maybe if they had a few more taunts or just a few more cards that did, um, you know, the uh, the return play, the comeback mechanics, that maybe it would work out for them. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been certainly tough for the uh, the player who's lost the board to manage to do anything. Yeah, but nobody's really tried going all in on taunts, like play every single taunt and just hope they can't break them all, which mm -hmm. could work because it's not like you can use many spells, so you just yeah. kind of hope eventually they run out of damage. All right, well, here we go. Uh, we see some taunts from Dog. It uh, looks like a Paladin Mirror to uh, kick off the series between Dog and Kibler. Uh, Kibler is uh, is well known for uh, his paladin play. It's certainly one of his favorite classes, and I think he is able to think about like how to build these decks conceptually very quickly. So uh, I think I think his paladin deck is going to be pretty good. The main concern I have for Kibler is perhaps one of his other decks um, may not be up to par. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good start for Dog as well. I uh, got the turn one zombie chow. Kibler kind of blanked on turn one. And if you fall too far behind, it's pretty bad. Yeah, but um, one drop going first is so much better than one drop going second. So yeah. truth is, Kibler's not really that behind. What do you think of the decision to hold on to that Aldor and the coin versus rushing for board control? Mm -hmm. like he could have coined out Aldor and just completely taken the board. But yeah, that's true. Whoa, am I seeing double Kibler? Whoa. Kibler versus Kibler. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, that's uh, that's one of the interesting four drops there. The Hungry Dragon. Looks like a dragon-themed deck. We see the Cog Hammer. It seems like a pretty solid deck. Um, Hungry Dragon is one of those cards that you know really seemed like it would be really good when Black Rock Mountain was being announced, but it really didn't play out to be that way because it's such a tempo loss to actually have to kill whatever it spawns. And um, the board tempo is kind of the name of the game with this uh, format we have in the Geico tournament. So, I don't know. It seems like a good four drop, and most four drops suck, but is it really mm -hmm. good good? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the real question is what else can you play? There's Sinyan, there's Argus when you're head on board, but it's one of the few big proactive four drops yeah. Well, it does enable the uh, the dragon synergies that he obviously has with the Black and Corruptor in hand. Yeah, I like playing out the Cog Hammer in anticipation of playing Hungry Dragon this turn. Uh, you get to weapon off whatever spawns, and you're kind of ahead on board in a mm -hmm. in a weird way. As long as nothing bad pops out, that's it's fine. A bore. Well. I guess dogs ahead on board then. Yeah, I think he is actually because he has the the option of peacekeep here. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, those haunted, the spectral spiders are not uh, one one dudes, <laughs> so mm -hmm. not gonna get any quartermaster value. Okay, uh, dog choosing to go face. Um, often in arena, I'd. I'd go for uh, the kill on the, the vulnerable creatures, but a 1-6, I mean, it's not like it can be buffed by kings or anything, so... Yeah, there's there's such fine. little stuff to punish you that it's mm -hmm. almost always correct to just hit them in the face. Alright, well, we have seen that be a pretty successful line of play for most of the players. Uh, looks like Emperor Tharsten is coming down, another very interesting, very powerful legal card. Um, hmm, what do we have here? You kind of want to sacrifice the, the dragon to play the cog hammer. Oh, that changes things a little bit. Well, well I, you could cog hammer first. Uh, trade in the 1-5 into the 3-3, three, three, cog hammer. Or no, you'd want to cog hammer last. I guess you don't want to waste a divine shield. Uh, well, you can just take the yeah, chance. Now, now you get to save your Aldor, yeah. All right, well, that turned out really well. Yep. Aldor is pretty important in this matchup, I'd say. I mean, your opponent's definitely going to have bigger stuff later on. 
Yeah, Paladin's a pretty good class in the early game, pretty good class in the mid game with his format, but also uh, Tyrion's going to pull in a lot of weight by himself. Uh, players can't really run silence unless you're shaman, players can't really run removal unless you're shaman. So just not playing against <laughs> the shaman, Tyrion's just going to win the game. And Kibler's actually done it. He is the first one to reclaim board control. <laughs> He was behind on board, and That's it only true. took him 16 health to come back. Yep. Which is completely fine in a Paladin Mirror, so... Yeah, especially when your opponent drops down a zombie chow for you. Yeah. Use all the health you want. And he can actually keep this board clear again, so... Mm. I wonder why he's choosing to attack first, I think. I think you better just play out some creatures, maybe get that juggle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, trading in a one-two before going for a juggle, and then like, isn't your five-four going to go into the two-five? Maybe you're going to go face, I guess, if you're playing like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see. I think he might trade with. Nope. Double face, face is the place. And he is it's, going to get pretty punished here with the Muster yeah. Quartermaster. He's going to get really punished. Wow. So maybe Dog will be the second player to come back from a losing position on the board. Yeah, I, I just don't think Kibler was considering uh, the... What was it? The Thorison reduced mm -hmm. the second... It's, it's not only playing around the second Quartermaster, it's playing around the second Quartermaster that got Thorison. So, yeah. it, with the Muster for battle. And yeah, now he's behind. Pretty devastating. Uh, I think he should attack first. <laughs> Might not matter too much. In fact, you could maybe play around Harrison a little bit, but yeah. It's Which we have seen. It's just yeah. I don't know. I guess if you think Paladin's really, really good, you'd maybe play Harrison. Yep, that's one of the main things. Is with cards like that in these formats, you you're not thinking about your own deck. You're morely thinking about what other people are going to be playing. And if you think it, that includes like Shaman, Hunter, Paladin, maybe even Warrior, uh, then Harrison seems like a good inclusion. Mm -hmm. All right, or Kibler uh, drops his hand. He's ready to play out his Nosdor move on next turn. Um, Dog's got a, a few mid-game options, including Heobot and Argus, which I think is what he's going to want to play to kind of try to play more on curve. But I'd say he doesn't really need the health right now, so... Mm. Yeah, I think... I think the only consideration he's making here is do I want to respect Quartermaster? Like, he's thinking, okay, if I just play completely safe, can I lose? And... I guess he decided yes, because he's just going to go face, I think. He might make, yeah, that trade seems fine, but... Okay. You really do want to apply as much face pressure as Wow! <laughs> And two He's arms, six. then. It looks like Kebler might be the third player to uh, <laughs> take back the board from a losing situation. Wow, this is this is a fun game, isn't it? Yeah. Now we have to see if Dog can become the fourth player. <laughs> All I right. mean, if it, you know, if he drew Nas Dormu this turn, he actually would just win. Yeah. <laughs> Nas Dormu was the winning card. All right. Well, uh, Kibler is still in bad shape just because of his very low life total here. Yep. Ooh, that would have been good for Dog. But yeah, it would have. Game winning, actually. <laughs> yeah, not quite what you want if you're Kibler right now. Um, oh, you have to not storm, right? Yeah, I think so. The one, the one, one doesn't really do anything. Well, Dog, Dog has five damage. The one one might prevent another one damage. So I think it's actually okay. Oh, I'm I think it's actually the right play. I'm just so sad we're not going to see Nazdormu. Oh, wow, he's playing around Sylvanas, of course. Well, this is going to be really awkward for Kibler to come back from. Yeah, like you said, though, he did trade in a lot more damage. So Dog is the fourth player to take back board control. <laughs> 
Well, that was a first, fun game. Our first back and forth game of the tournament. The Paladin Mirror from Dog and uh, Kibler ends with Kibler's defeat. Uh, pretty good stuff, though. Very, very back and forth. Both players played pretty well. The only thing that we criticized a little bit was maybe the the juggler from Kibler, but not, I mean, with his strategy, he wanted to go face. So, yeah, yeah. it just happened to not work out for him because that second discounted quartermaster. And I mean that is pretty extreme. So uh, overall, yeah. I think they played excellent. Just about everything that Kibler tried to do kind of blew back in his face. Like he he tried yeah. to go face and make it more of a race, and then his opponent went discounted heelbot, discounted Belcher. Your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, great! Like I thought I thought this would be a race, but now it's like you're completely. You have to play for board when your opponent's at twenty eight with the sledge Belcher up. Yep. All right, well, Dog gets that first point. It looks like he's moving on to his Hunter deck. And, oh, that's an Akanai. So we're going to see Priest for the first time here. So Akanai yeah. is legal. That's that's a good four drop. Uh, Hungry Dragon use... seems to have made it. Yeah, you can use, uh, I actually just thought of this, you can still use Light of the Naru. You can't use Circle of Healing. Mm -hmm. Light of the Naru has a one mana cost, and it has three in its card text. So it is legal. Okay. Twilight Whelp. Kibler with his second dragon deck. Well, that's still pretty good. Like you can you can whelp and zombie child on turn one. That's pretty sick. <laughs> like, do you uh, looks like do he's, that though? Yeah, he's gonna hold on to the coin to have better plays later. I feel like um, you can almost guarantee like a heal next turn. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I think it worked out pretty well that he kept the coin. He gets to probably go Blackwing into Coin Corruptor mm -hmm. to hopefully get the board more. I mean, as the priest here, I feel like if you can get a hold of the board, you probably are going to win. Uh, you can still play Shadow or Death in this format, so big stuff is pretty easily dealable with. It's, it's mostly just this mid-game that you're a little worried about. Mm -hmm. Well, it's looking pretty good. Again, uh, I was I was hoping that I would be uh, pleasantly surprised by uh, mm. how strong Priest might be in this format, and uh, I am. Uh, it certainly does not look like a weak deck at all. Yeah, I might have liked killing off the Creeper uh, to play around Kill Command, which Dog does happen to have, but... I mean, Dog doesn't feel great about wasting his entire turn Kill Commanding, but, it, but it's all he has, so... Mm-hmm. Well, they could have juggled, I guess. Just hope for the best. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, well, you do have the option to black and corruptor, but it doesn't seem worth it here. Yeah, it's it's not. You should hold on to that for when it gets the most value, uh, when you need that three damage. But I think the real question is: Is he going to play Azure Drake or just go for the Hungry Dragon? A Hunger Dragon has to be too risky. It's why the card is really not too good, because um, you're kind of in a winning situation, except like 10% of the time, where you can just lose the game. Well, that That's good. Yep. So. And this, is not, this is not that time. So uh, Yeah, quite I mean, well. the funny thing about Hungry Dragon is when you feel bad about playing it on turn four with the minion already on board, like, ugh. <laughs> how, how good is the card if you feel bad about that? Mm -hmm. Well, how about that for aggression? Uh, Leroy makes his first appearance in uh, in Dogs' uh, Hunter deck. Seems yeah, very I mean, fitting. I like it. Yep. I mean, when you don't have too much time to think, you're you're pretty much just throwing in any card that you know is pretty good in a Hunter deck. You're like, well, this is a Hunter card. You know, yeah. throw that in there. Um, funny enough, there was some chance you could kill the dragon if it was, like, juggles all into the dragon and the bow. Yeah. Uh, ooh. I wonder if you play that death. Yeah, you probably do. Just because it's not going to hit much? Um, well, it's basically before he drew the death, I think the play was probably Blackwing Corruptor. And, yeah. Uh, and just trade off. But now you basically get a directly better play, which is death, trade, and heal. 
You get the same exact kind of board, but you get to hold on to a Corruptor instead of a Death. I think Corruptor is probably just overall better. Do you think the heal is worth it over the uh, Blackman Technician? You have, true. you have good curves with the bananas from here on out anyway. Yeah, you should probably go for the Technician because if you heal, your board does just die to a 1-1 one, one and a bow. Mm -hmm. So that Death Top deck was actually... All right. Well, he gets an abusive to make up for two damage he needs, but he doesn't quite have the uh, fitting amount. He can't really. Uh, yeah, he can't distribute it correctly. Yeah, he can't distribute it correctly. So, not the turn he really wanted. Uh, but we've talked about how there's no real board clears, and Dog's basically trying to abuse that now by just going face, putting out a taunt. I mean, the taunt's just going to die to a banana. But yeah, well, it is going to die with banana, and I yeah. think the Black Queen Corruptor is coming up now on the Abusive Surgeon. Yep, now's about the time where it's like, okay, let's just play safe. I've got a hold of the board. Uh, Nineteen, the pretty healthy life total, so can't can't really get burned out from here unless that shade grows really big. Shade's a pretty interesting inclusion, actually. Hmm. Seems to be in line. You want to uh, trigger damage to face. Yeah. And if, if you're losing, it kind of does that. What other stealth cards can you play? Stranglehold Tiger. Uh, that's true. There's really not that many. Jungle Panther, not allowed. Nope. You can't play the Worgen, and we've seen a lot of players actually do play the Worgen. I wonder how the Frayed Kibler is going to be. Not at all. Would a Kill Command do it? How he doesn't have a beast out. Would a bow do it? No. It's quite a ways off. So I definitely like the face attacks from Kibler. Mm -hmm. Can't be afraid to be the aggressor, even when your opponent's a hunter. Well, Dog has to start trading here. And yep. I think it's still going to not be enough because of the Akanai. Well, He's probably he... going to cut it too close. Well, no, he knows there's a banana. So, <laughs> so he can't... Like, if you look at this board state, you're like, okay, you kill off the 2-3, your opponent's 1 off lethal. Oh, that's right, that's right. But uh, because of the banana, you actually know that you cannot do that. In fact, this is... A misplay. This is a misplay. You are dead 100%. Yeah. I, if I were Kibler, I would use the banana just to make my opponent feel stupid. <laughs> I wouldn't even show the Akanai. Okay. Yeah, dog, dog kind of just like acknowledges. Yeah. Like, oh, right, right, banana. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's uh, <laughs> even a bit of a face fall. I mean this this is kind of what you expect. You expect people to uh, forget the uh, consequences of some of the cards because these are cards yeah. that are very seldomly used in the constructed format. And um, yeah, I mean um, a lot of the players are where they are because they just have a lot of training. They put in a lot of time, but they do that with uh, very specific circumstances. Uh, which is the opposite of what we're uh, bringing to you guys with this tournament. Yeah, given like, you know, thousands and thousands of games of playing this format, I'm sure they'd be playing like very optimally, almost perfectly, but this is new to these guys. You know, you don't play every day with Muckle in your Hunter deck, mm -hmm. so you're not, you know, you're really not just thinking about those bananas when it comes to the late game. Well, how about this for a card I hadn't thought of? What about the Mad Bomber? That works. Ooh, that actually seems pretty good with all the uh, the one health guys kind of floating around. Yeah, he is the natural enemy of Worgen Infiltrator. Yep, most of the time. Seventy-one percent. <laughs> seems like some salty math you've done there, Crip. Seems uh, like a, seems like a few too many bombs went the wrong way, and you decided to math it out. No, it's it's like whenever you whenever you draft like that one one drop in arena, you get the Worgen infiltrator. Like every time yeah. you play it, you get bombarded. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. makes no sense. <laughs> All uh, right, well, I was going for the juggle here. Yeah, of course, and it hits. It. Why wouldn't it? Well, Kibble actually threw away a, a lightning storm, so I mean it, it probably works out fine with the feral spirits. Oh, this is going to be a pretty big juggle. Mm -hmm. In fact, I mean, he's going to maximize his chances. 
I'm not too big of a fan of, um, I don't think it's going to go for it, yeah, seems good. I'm not too big of a fan of um, the Feral Spirits. I feel like sometimes they work, but usually they don't, and when they don't, you just cost yourself the game. Ooh, perfect juggles. Yeah, like now you have basically nothing. Oh, no, you have plenty of stuff. Okay, never yeah. mind. Yeah, he's fine, Crip. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's actually in great shape. If as, at least if he draws uh, a four drop or a three drop next turn, he's gonna be fine. Uh, he might just end up hexing. Oh god, you don't want to hex Wolf Rider though. Oh wait, is that Stranglethorn Tiger just in the deck? Because that's not from Web Spinner. Uh, Web Spinner was silenced. Yeah, it's just in the deck. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, hex is fine here. I think it's, it's probably you can't play Savannah High Main so. It's about the best thing you get to hex is, you know, uh, around mm -hmm. a three drop. You can't really hex a Stranglethorn Tiger, so. The unfortunate part is he doesn't get a great fire elemental, so he's probably just going to Emperor, which isn't too unfortunate, actually, all things considered. Yep. Emperor comes down, makes a pretty good show here. He's able to Rock Biter, Fire Elemental, and Mana Tide next turn, and then Whew. also remove the turn after that. Yeah, but that's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's that's 11 this turn. <laughs> oh, man. It looks like you'll have to rock wider down the, um, the, the frog. frog. Yeah. yeah. He can earth shock it if he wants, but that doesn't sound good. No. Yeah, the problem is here, he really can't. He can't deal with the Worgen, and he can't deal with the Creeper, so that's three guaranteed. The Wolf Rider is another three, and here power is two. That puts you to two, and that's pretty much game. Yeah, he might have anti killbot though. He is playing pretty control deck, so he had to anticipate uh, maybe playing against some aggressive decks. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count him out 100% here, is what I'm saying. Man, I'm feeling pretty good if I'm dog. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think, well, he's definitely fishing for it, at least a taunt. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh, Leroy boys, game over. <laughs> Esports. Yeah, man, these these aggressive <laughs> decks are really successful. Um, in that last game where uh, Kibler took control of the priest deck, that just kind of happens every now and then. But I think more often than not, the uh, the aggressor in this format is just going to take away with it. Well. The interesting thing is, Kibler got his priest win out of the way. Dog has, still has his. And I would say, without a doubt, priest is dog's weakest deck. So, have we seen it, though? I don't think we have. No, we, we haven't seen it. I'm just kind of guessing. And before this tournament even started, we thought Shaman and Paladin were really the, the best decks. And oh. there's, a mag <laughs> there's a Magma Rager. Well, the best part about it is you guarantee you can only draw into one. Yeah, it is... Ooh, nope. the, looks like the game, someone ripped. Game crashed because of the Magma Rager. <laughs> eh, it looks like we're fine though. All right, so uh, Kibler's back at playing Dragon Paladin. Um, very nearly uh, took the game against uh, Dog in the opener, but uh, didn't quite uh, get the full finish here. Again, an excellent hand though. The running uh, Blackwing technicians. Yeah. So hard to deal with, especially when yeah, there's I no mean, Shadow Word Pain. There's really, yeah, there's not much to punish creatures in this format. Uh, if if there was a... Ooh, ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the dream. <laughs> all right, all right. Magma Ranger did it. Yeah. For if all you guys... ever a doubt... <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> Wait, why did he trade? Um, uh, Velens? Oh yes. yeah, Velens. Velens yeah. could, have, could have done it. I was, wow. I always look at Magrager, I'm like, what What do you even play around by trading? But I guess Magrager gets it done here. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> oh, there's the Velens. Yep, yeah, but uh, does it accomplish much to play it? I feel like playing uh, Hero Power and a Dark Cultist might be a little bit better. Yeah, it only it only puts your minion 
at six, which is still exactly dead to mm -hmm. Yeah. Now Valens was one of the cards that I kinda looked at and thought, okay, that's pretty good in this format. It's it's a good card yeah. overall. Uh but yeah, I, I was thinking the worst part here for the priest would be the early game, and surprisingly enough, Magma Rager was the card to carry him through it. All right, well, he does go with the Velens. Uh, I guess he's okay with just uh, trading for the board and starting behind again next turn. Yeah, just... Uh, well, it walked right into Blackwing Corruptor. Yep. And Blackwing Corruptor lines up really well with Emperor... So, things going pretty well. There is a Harrison Jones in Dog's Priest deck, though. Mm -hmm. Should come big later. Yeah, the Priest deck is certainly not out. It's just the uh, Priest often relies on, like, big board clears to kind of reset. And yeah. it doesn't... It has no options for any of those in this format. So, it's... You kind of have to think of it like everybody is basically playing Druid. <laughs> yep. This is like one big druidless druid battle. Yeah. Because druid cannot play innervate or wild <laughs> So it's just one big battle for the board. Not many swing cards. All right. Dog's still playing from behind. Not much of a choice. Uh, ooh, is there an efficient play here? <laughs> if you're lucky, there is. Yeah, that seemed to do it last time. Well, no, because then you really can't play anything after the cog hammer, so. Yeah, it has a very awkward mana. Um, what if you play the dragon consort and just trade off most of your board just to have a good turn next turn? Yeah, the quartermaster on first glance seems good, but then you don't have an efficient way to trade into the dark cultist. So mm -hmm. I think I like that. And then you just keep control of your board, you get to push 3 damage, and works out pretty well. It goes with the uh, Corruptor instead, have this a bigger just, board this turn. Yeah, it's a little more aggressive of a play, get to push more damage, put more Seems just as on good. the table. Yep. It's, it's a little different, does some things better, some things worse. You, can, you still have the option of going Dragon Consort and Azure Drake next turn, mm -hmm. and again, Really no way for priests to clear this board entirely. We're also getting a, a bit of an, you know, kind of insight on the way Kibler's playing this. He's playing, like, slow decks, but he's playing them very aggressively. Yep. But, well, I mean, but, most most of the plays that we disagreed with, that's, that's what he's doing. So I, I kind of get it now, you know? Yeah, there's also the fact that when you're building the actual deck, you have 15 minutes. After that, you get all the time in the world to think about how you want to play it, and maybe after considering the format, he thinks, okay, I'm not playing around anything. Like, you know, yeah. Screw yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> all right, and so we have Consort into Consort. Yep, this completely goes along with that line of thinking, and you know, I'll just play my biggest stuff every turn, keep his board clear, and hit face. Well, he has basically <laughs> no chance to lose from what I see right now. This is, uh, is this lethal? Wait, yeah, this is exact lethal. Okay. Well, it's a little over with... Oh! Okay. He missed lethal. Did he? I didn't quite count it. He yeah, he had, uh, he, had, he had 21. Yeah, you're right. He had four over lethal. Or two over lethal, two over lethal. With the quartermaster and the cog hammer. He had 22 on board. It's all right. I've, I've heard of, of really, really, really good players uh, missing lethal in the past. <laughs> I just yeah. think it was pretty funny in Osdorman who actually caused the miss lethal. He was like, well, I'm trading into that ASAP. Yeah. So, Osdorman, you know, maybe you put it in your constructed deck. Nah. Bamboozle some people. Nah. Oh. Nah. Oh. If you're in the spot where it's like your only legendary, perhaps. <laughs> only. Mm hmm. All right. I'm just going through the motions here, but yeah, it is absolutely over. So uh, Kibler ties it up once again. Two points on the board apiece, and we are in the final game. Uh, this is the uh, the round of eight match. So we had the semifinal earlier between um, uh, Forsen and Saviz. 
Um, we are not going to see quite all of our players today. We will have Firebat and Life Coach play tomorrow. And the winner of uh, this match will play the winner of that tomorrow as well. So who's your money on now? we got Shaman versus Priest. We saw some of the Priest yeah. the Dog has. It seems a little uh, a little weak, but maybe with some well-timed Magma Ragers, he can make it happen. Well, if there's a matchup you want it in, or if there's a matchup you want to be Priest, it might be Shaman. What is uh, that? Well, just like Death lines up really well with some of their stuff. They don't flood the board, really. They just kind of... And if they do, it's just totems. Not a huge deal. Uh, they can't play Flame Tongue Totem or anything, so... You know, no. You can play Bloodlust, but I don't think we'll see that. I think we're going to see... It looks like it's not as much of a Mech Shaman as some of the other players. Uh, it's yeah. more of just mid-range. Control. And in that matchup, typically the Priest is favored, but I think it's because the Priest has the board clears, which they don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... In, uh, in Arena, if you're playing Priest, uh, the worst matchup is Paladin, because you can't like keep up with the 1-1s, exactly yep. for that reason that you can't really reliably get board clears, and Shaman is the second worst because of that reason as well. Uh, but it, you, you mentioned, it, yeah, you're right, it's just not as threatening. The totems are not as threatening as they are in every other game mode, because they have cards like Flame Tongue Totem and other buffs. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think I still favor Kibler, but... I would say you're not feeling terrible about Priest versus Shaman as compared to like last matchup. I think the Paladin was heavily favored. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, it's not as bad. Mana Tide is, is pretty good, though. Yeah, I think we'll see a Hex, though. Uh, you think? I think there's a lot better stuff for Hex later on. I think you get to Fire Elliot next turn. Uh, I mean, it really, I guess, depends on how much you want to control the board. And I think drawing cards is pretty good. Okay. Well, he does agree with you. Yeah. Oh, the Fire Guard Destroyer! <laughs> there it is. We made it! It's you think in he the has deck. Earth Elemental as well? You think I, I would hope. I would hope. But I, there's still definitely a chance he doesn't. Wow. That does a lot of damage. Yeah, it you does. Just, you just Are you actually going to get a, yeah, actually, you're gonna get a better one against the uh, Priest? <laughs> he's like thumbing over it. He's like, ah. yeah, I, so the one thing it does is it protects your fire elemental, or, or it protects your mana tide rather, um, over yeah, it, fire elemental. You don't if you're need a fire elemental because you have the fire guard destroyer next turn, and you'll still have some board. Yeah, uh, basically it, it protects your mana tide, whereas fire elemental doesn't. And so in that regard, I think it's a lot better because it's just generating your card advantage. And another Fire Elemental. Yep. I mean, his hand is just growing, and it's getting pretty stacked on good cards, so... It's not, it's not like you're ever going to fall behind on board. Well, here comes the Emperor again, and that is a, a really threatening thing. Um, can you deal with it? Now you can with a Lightning Bolt. Uh, you can actually Lightning Bolt and Fire Guard Destroyer overload for two, yeah. which still enables you to Fire Elemental on turn eight. Yeah, I think that was the perfect top deck, but it's actually just going to go with the Hex. Okay. Dog's even just, like, upset about that. He was thinking maybe he'd just run away with the game on an Emperor. Yeah, I think he's just kind of feeling the pressure from that Manti. That Manti was absolutely an insane investment. Yeah. It it has gotten its, its weight in gold and more, so... Yeah, I mean... Going back to last turn, kind of like the play you mentioned, it's like, what do you really open up? Uh, not overloading yourself. Yeah, now you're kind of behind on, on the board, and you don't really have anything to catch up again. Yeah, I mean, I think he's he's still fine. But also, the Hex even, like, lines up. We, we can see there's a Sylvanas and Dog Sand, but lines up much better with some of the other cards compared to just using it on what he did. Mm -hmm. And now he has to make, like, kind of an, an inefficient play. Uh, so. Maybe you would have liked the Fire Guard Destroyer last turn. But Mana Tide is drawing four now. Yeah, and that's so. just insane. Yeah. It's like three mana, draw four cards, and develop a body. So it's like gain some life. Yeah, Shaman. Shaman's main weakness is their cards. 
at, at some point they don't one for one very well or they don't yeah they, they can't even one for one sometimes and so you need to draw cards somehow to stay ahead on cards and that's worked out pretty well for him and oh here comes the magna rager that's worked two, pretty well for dog so far two mana there it is there's there's earth elemental does he have the hat trick? Does he have the unbound elemental as well? I would really hope so with all the overload. Like, Feral Spirit, Fire Guard Destroyer, oh, it'd be such a good three drop. Yeah, it would. Well, okay. Um, can you deal with all of this? I feel like there's some way. Um, Alakir does not no. quite do it. You can't. You can only clear out two, which is fine. Like, you don't do you really want to... Just Fire Elemental Totem? Yeah, probably. Like, you, you save your Fire Elemental at one health, because what can Priest do to punish that? No Holy Nova. Yep. No Shadow Madness. No Light Bomb. <laughs> so, I mean, I think you just, like, preserve your minions as much as possible. Uh, you're way ahead on cards. You're fine on life. Your opponent's a Priest. Like... It looks like he wants to go all in on the Earth Elemental, probably. Oh! Oh! Okay. Ah! Uh, is this weak to anything? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're trying to think of things this is bad against. I think he's fine. And. Yeah, he actually drew the death, which may have been kind of bad in some cases. Oh, and nice, the Velen's death. Yeah. Wow. And that Mana Tide Totem is going down. Uh, it might be a oh. bit too late, uh, especially because Kibler might not be running weapons in this Shaman deck. Yeah, it's it's looking bad. That's uh, especially you saw you've seen a death like. <laughs> Take your pick. What do you like here? <laughs> you know, just play anything yeah. you want. Well, he only wants to protect his Emperor at least for next turn. That seems to be a pretty nice uh, way to handle that turn. Uh, next up, we have another Magma Rager. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Magma Rager out of the tournament. Yeah. That's what it seems like it's going to be for Dog. Oh, well, it's happened to quite a few players now. Well, to be fair, I think the Shaman probably would have still taken this. <laughs> but. Okay, so he's thinking about the Lightning Storm. I like the Lightning Storm here. Yeah, you can. I mean, you basically are just thinking, okay, just avoid the worst case scenario. Like, just don't screw up the sequencing. Don't let your opponent take a fresh 5 5 Emperor. Mm. I kind of like the, the Lightning Storm and then Juggler Totem. Just to really, like, get that Sylvanas off the board. I kind of just like this. I mean, you get the second Emperor. Oh man, things are looking good for Kibler. Yes, they are. Uh, Dog has uh, some more sustain in this game with some heals and stuff, but that doesn't really seem to matter at all. Have you ever, uh, in one turn, have you ever played out Knife Juggler, Haunted Creeper, Double Fire Guard, Destroyer, Earth Elemental, Lightning Storm? Nope. <laughs> I have not. I'd like to see that, you know. That'll cool. leave him with a six overload for the following turn. And with that, he can actually leave with eight overload the following turn. Oh man, I just I just want to see how low he can get these cards to cost. Alright. Well Sylvanas is just kinda of becoming more and more of a threat now, and Kibler doesn't have any way to deal with it uh without some uh, RNG involved here. Yeah, Kibler's just agonizing over how he's gonna win. <laughs> All right. Kibler chose to make that trade to uh, make the heal bot kill itself when it hits into a taunt and to clear up some room on the board for the taunts to, to be dropped. If he Another... wasn't overloaded, he could play this entire hand. <laughs> Alright. I think the new constraint might be the Nas Dormu timer. Rather than mana. Oh, Earthshock. There it is. 
That has to be it. I think Dog's only chance in this game was to steal a very powerful minion with Solanus, and that has uh, that that is no longer possible. So you you got to play non-storm move, right? You got to end in style. Yep. Yeah, Kibler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's no card that comes to mind here. There's no legal Deathwing. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Oh, it oh is there it, it is! Unfound. There it is! Wow. Kibler might have the perfect Shaman deck. And it looks like your uh, your pick for the tournament uh, may indeed be the player with the best decks. It certainly seems so from what we've seen. Um, the the Priest may be not quite performing as well as some of the other decks that we've seen, but certainly way better than we had anticipated. Um, with, with the Dragon theme, just getting that board presence early on. Seems to work better. It certainly seemed to work better for Kibler than it did for Dog, who is playing more of a generic control priest. Yep. So I, I definitely really liked his Shaman deck. Seemed like he, I don't know if he spent a lot of time or if he just kind of hit the nail on the head with a lot of his picks. But mm -hmm. worked out really well, and he'll be advancing into the second semifinal to see if he can go up against Forsen in the finals. Yep. We'll have that match for you guys tomorrow. Um, we also will uh, get Kibler for a short interview before we head off for the day. And uh, before we uh, take a quick break for that, just want to mention that if you guys want to uh, check out geico.onog.gg, if you guys want to see the raffle and uh, some of the some of the cool stuff uh, that's uh, that's happening. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be back in uh, just a few minutes, guys. Yes. Nope. I oh I just heard you. No, nope, suddenly. Oh, you heard, you heard All me. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. He can, well, we're he can. live. Welcome back, guys. Um, we got Kibler here, uh, the winner of the last match. Some pretty interesting stuff. We just figured out how to be able to communicate. So fortunately, <laughs> that will let us uh, have maybe an acceptable interview. So, uh, what do you think of the format, Kibler? It's a pretty interesting one. And I, it, it seems like you really got a good grasp of it. I mean, it was really hard for me. Like, I I used every single moment of the deck building period uh, you know like trying to figure out you know what cards were even legal and like eventually find like pa you know sort of pockets of different cards that work together that's kind of how i ended up with the two dragon decks is that i was like oh okay i can play corruptor and technician and a bunch of the good dragons so that's sort of the shell i built both those decks from mm -hmm. well uh, it seemed pretty good uh we've seen a lot of players uh play shaman which we thought was like the dominant class but you were the first player to actually nail down all the cards that seem really broken <laughs> well yeah i mean Manatai completely carried that last game. Manatai was absolutely bonkers um, there against the priest, yeah. and uh, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that all of my decks could be improved. Like the one card that I actually had briefly in in one of them that somehow ended up in none of them was Defender of Argus. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just got crushed by the Hunter deck because I didn't have really taunts, you know, like in any of my decks. Because I was like, oh, I need these spots for the dragon mm -hmm. package and everything. But uh, ultimately, I ended up working out. So. Yeah, it was really interesting that you chose like a more constructive, uh, a more um, control approach, and it actually worked out for you. Uh, it, it definitely shows that you are you are very good in this field of coming up with on the spot decks. Uh, as most of the players so far to produce wins in the tournament have been playing like exclusively very aggressive decks, mm -hmm. and you kind of make it work with the slow ones. And uh, priest, uh, we were kind of doubting that class. Uh, what was what was the thought process behind uh, bringing that? I know it was very tight on time and stuff, but there was probably some reason to pick it over the others. I mean, Priest was actually the last the last deck that I built, but I think Priest is it was was actually maybe my best deck. Um, for one, I think that that because there's no sort of board sweeps, there's no, none of the you know quality consecration those sort of things. Um, you can basically just play to the board really well, and getting ahead in the board is frequently just going to snowball into a victory. Right. And Priest just plays to the board super well with the hero power. With you know, I mean, the the game that I played where I just had like you know Twilight Whelp into Zombie Chow into Gigantic Three Drop into Gigantic Four Drop, and it's just really hard to come back from that. Yeah, the the comebacks were uh, pretty exciting. Uh, you and Dog actually produced the first comeback of the tournament <laughs> and the second comeback of the tournament. In the same and, game. And the third and the fourth comeback of the <laughs> tournament, all all in that Paladin mirror. Um, yeah, it had to do a lot with your play style. And uh, Chalky mentioned that it was a very interesting aspect where, you know, you only have such an amount of time to actually build the decks, but you have a longer amount of time to think about how you're going to play them. Um, do, do you spend, like, a generous amount of time 
uh, after you've done building the deck to really see how you can best make use of the cards. What, what is that process like? Um, I mean, I, I, you know, went and sort of th tried to think about what other people would be playing. And, you know, one of the, one of the classes that I, that I thought that would see a lot of play was Warlock, which interestingly, neither Dog or I played, just because, mm -hmm. you know, cards like Flame Imp and Doom Guard are, are legal and they're obviously among the more powerful Warlock cards. Um, and, you know, I was just like, well, okay, you know, the way that I'm going to have to beat these, because I didn't put any taunts into my deck for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, I was actually yep. just playing aggressively. Uh, for the most part, and that, you know, that's part of the reason that I really liked the, like I said, the build for the the priest deck, and also just, the, I mean, the, the the dragon paladin deck as well. You know, mulliganing for specifically the uh, the blackwing technicians because it's difficult for a lot of a lot of decks without spells to come back from just being behind a, a significant body like that early on. Right, right. So, how did you feel when you play when you coined a blackwing technician? It's like, well, nothing really challenges <laughs> this well. <laughs> That was Mag yeah. Magma Rager. And then I had to trade into a Magma Rager for fear of Valence Chosen. I was just like, is this really happening to me? Yeah. I have like, you know, one of the best three drops of the game, and I have to trade it into a Magma Rager. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was entertaining, to say the least. Yeah, you should have played the dude on turn two. I would, apparently, apparently, I, I, I would have been all prepared yep. for the Magma Rager. It was a complete hindsight misplay. Yeah. I, it was funny, I literally was thinking about that. I was like, oh, I, 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 I could have saved my coin, you know? Yeah. Traded just as well. <laughs> what could have been. Um, all right. Well, uh, great stuff. Congratulations again. You'll be facing off uh, against the winner uh, between Life Coach and Firebat tomorrow. Uh, have you, uh, just, just closing, uh, have you gotten a chance to see some of the other players play? What's, what's the field like? You feeling good about the tournament right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I watched some of the other matches. I, I know that Forsen is along to the, the finals. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, his his decks look pretty strong. You know, like the the uh, like I said, the the warlock deck that I sort of anticipated a lot of a lot of people playing uh, was you know looked like his strongest deck from what I could tell. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do think that like my uh, my decks probably line up pretty well against that, just because of the the number of oversized minions I have at various costs. You know, with the the priest deck in particular, I think lines up great. You know, like uh, dark cultist and uh, blackwing tech are just so good against those sort of decks. Right. And then all, right. all the one drops plus Valence chosen. So, good stuff. Uh, well, thanks for coming on, Kibler. Congratulations again. Um, we'll we'll have the rest of the tournament on for you guys tomorrow. So if you guys enjoyed the broadcast, if you guys enjoyed the theme, the players, if you guys enjoyed anything, check it out. Then uh, big thanks for uh, for Chalky for uh, hosting it with me. Uh, and uh, yeah, Geico sponsoring. If you guys want to uh, check out some of the uh, some of the deals, some of the info. Where can they go to check that out, Chalky? Uh, you can go to geico.onog.gg to enter the raffle for the TSM PC. And also, One Nation of Gamers is running a complete summer circuit of open events. You can go to Liquid Hearth to check that out and sign up for them. Uh, pretty much every week, the next feature tournament is actually just next weekend, so be sure to check that out as well. All right, great stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Check in tomorrow.